Hi there, this is Waves Lesson 3, Standing Waves Part 1. So first of all, let's start with this question. So I want you to pause and attempt it, and then I'll take you through the answers. Figure 6 represents a progressive wave travelling from left to right on a stretched string. Part A, 1, calculate the wavelength of the wave. So as you can see, if I start at point X, and I try and trace this wave out, that will be one full wave. And that would be one and a quarter waves. So for one and a quarter waves, we know that the distance is 0 0.5 meters. So if we do 0 0.50 meters and divide it by one and a quarter waves, 1.25 waves, we get a wavelength of 0 0.4 meters. So the next bit, we've got the frequency, 22 hertz, and we need the speed of the wave. So we can just use the wave speed is equal to frequency times wavelength. So that's 22 multiplied by 0 0.4, which gives a wave speed of 8.8 .8 meters per second. Next one, state the phase difference between points X and Y. So what we can do is trace back from point Y and go back a full wave. So let's do that in a different color. So if we go back one full wave, we end up back at this equilibrium position. So that is equivalent to point Y. So that is point Y in effect. And if we look at X and Y in relation to each other, they're a quarter of a wavelength apart. So if you remember, a quarter of a wavelength is equal to 90 degrees or pi by two radians. Okay, now that's out of the way, let's look at some new information. So first of all, superposition of waves. So what is this? It's the process that occurs when two waves of the same type meet in the same space. So the principle of superposition when two waves meet, the total displacement at a point is equal to the sum of the individual displacements at that point. So it's a bit of a convoluted statement, but it's it's easy in practice. So if two waves are doing the same thing at the same point in time, in the same region of space, they will undergo reinforcement and their amplitude will increase. That's called constructive interference, the top one, this one. And the bottom one, if they're doing the opposite thing at the same time, you'll get cancellation. That's complete, in this instance, is complete destructive interference. Remember to pause at any point if you need to take some notes. So stationary waves. A stationary wave can be formed by the superposition of two progressive waves of the same frequency Travelling in opposite directions. It's usually achieved by superposing a reflected wave with its incident wave. So a bit more information. Nodes and antinodes. So nodes are points within a stationary wave that have the minimum usually zero amplitude. So that's the complete destructive interference I was talking about a moment ago. And then we have antinodes. So antinodes are points within a stationary wave that have the maximum amplitude or complete constructive interference. Typo there, that's a no. Complete. So if you get this information down, when we move on to some diagrams, these will make uh, much more sense. So here's a diagram, a very basic one. So this is an example of the first harmonic or the fundamental frequency. It's a standing wave. And essentially, so we would send out a standing wave from this point. It would travel across this string to this side, reflect, and then undergo superposition. And these two 
regions of space at the sides. These are nodes. That's the complete destructive interference, which we were talking about a moment ago. And this max, this region of space where we get a maximum amplitude. Remember, this is this is just one physical stream. The the wave that's presented is just the extremes of its oscillation. So this bit in the middle, where you get complete constructive interference, would be an antinode. So sometimes we need to figure out the wavelength of this wave. Now this is half a wavelength, this, this one loop. So say for example, if this was 1.2 meters, what would the wavelength of the wave be? Well, it's half a wavelength, so the full wavelength would simply be 2.4 meters. Let's have a look at the next one. So the next one you might have guessed, instead of one loop, we would have two. Like this. So this has got another name. Well, there's two names for this one. Second harmonic, after the first harmonic. Or we call this one the first overtone. So again, you'll see, at either end we've got nodes. But this time the frequency of this, this wave has increased because the frequency is the amount of waves that would occupy a space. This distance is the same as last time. It's 1.2 meters still. So the frequency has increased. We've now got an extra node. So we've got a node on either side and a node in the middle. And we've now got two anti-nodes. So two, max, two regions of space with maximum amplitude. So what would the wavelength be in this case? Do you think? Well, if it's 1.2 meters, we've actually got one full wave. So the wavelength is 1.2 meters. Let's move on and look at the second overtone. So three loops. Same distance. 1.2 meters. So the frequency is obviously increased and the wavelength's gone down. So now we've got two nodes at either end, as always, and then two nodes in the middle. So there's four nodes. How many anti nodes? We've got three. And this is the second overtone. The wavelength in this case, well, we've got one and a half wavelengths in the 1.2 meters. So the wavelength would be 0 0.8 meters. Which is there. Let's have a look at the third overtone. This is the last one that we'll look at. So the frequency is increased again. As always, nodes at either side. So a progressive wave is sent out from this side. It gets to the other side, reflects back on itself and undergoes superposition. So this time we've got one, two, five nodes and four anti nodes. I'm not going to label them all this time. So this distance is still the 1.2 meters. So what do you think the wavelength is this time? As you can see, one full wave. This term would have been 0 0.6 meters. I'm just going to sketch that back on again. So hopefully that's okay. And there could be a, another one. You could put five loops, six loops, so on and so forth. In terms of drawing them, you, can, you are asked to draw them in exams sometimes. So I'll just show you how I would draw them. Um, let's say this was the second harmonic, so two loops. I'll try and find a central point, and then just draw the half loops at a time. Somewhat like this. Okay, so let's move on. So comparison of stationary and progressive waves, so here's a table of information. So you'll need to pause the video. and get this written down. So stationary wave and progressive wave, information for both, energy and momentum, known at transfer of energy from one point to another. Progressive wave, both moving speeds, C equals F lambda. Amplitude, 
So stationary wave varies from zero at nodes to a maximum at antinodes, which we've just discussed. Progressive wave is the same for all particles within a wave. Frequency, all particles oscillate at the same frequency, except those at nodes. Progressive wave, all particles oscillate at the same frequency. Wavelength, this is equal to twice the distance between adjacent nodes. Wavelength on a progressive wave, this is equal to the distance between particles at the same phase. And the phase difference between two particles. Now this is very important for the stationary wave because this question is examined or this principle is examined a lot, questions and exams. So phase difference between the two particles, between nodes, so in between two individual nodes, all the particles are the same phase. Any of the two particles have a phase difference equal to m pi, where m is the number of nodes between the particles. We'll discuss that one later. Uh, progressive waves, any two particles have phase difference equal to 2 pi d over lambda, where d is the distance between the two particles. And again, for this one, we'll look at some exam questions, exam style questions in the next lesson. So if you want to pause and get that information, the most important thing that I've said that, that comes up a lot in for all exam boards is the phase difference between two particles for stationary wave. So the particles are the same phase. And when you practice, when we go through the exam questions next session, you'll see that in action. So let's have a go at this one. So let's pause and have a go. A string of length 60 centimetres has fundamental frequency of 20 hertz. Calculate the wavelength of the fundamental mode. So remember the fundamental mode or the fundamental frequency is where there is just one half loop like this. So the string is length 60 centimetres, so this is 0 0.6 metres. So what would the wavelength be? Well, the wavelength is obviously twice that, so 0 0.6 times 2. It's 1.2 metres. So wavelength 1.2 metres. So part B, the speed of the progressive waves making up the stationary wave. So that would be V equals F lambda. So the frequency is 20 hertz multiplied by the wavelength, 1.2 meters. That gives a wave speed of 24 meters per second. And then part C, the number of loops formed if with the same string, the length of the string was increased to 1.2 meters and the frequency to 30 hertz. So it's a little bit confusing this one, but what we need to do is to calculate the length of each loop. So let's get the, the new wavelength. So the wavelength would be the wave speed divided by the frequency. So the wave speed would still be 24 meters per second divided by the new frequency of 30 hertz. So that gives a wavelength of 0 0.8 meters. I'm just going to make some room and do a diagram. So we've got a wavelength of 0 0.8 meters and a region of space that is 1.2 meters in length. So if a full wave is 0 0.8 meters, that means that a full wave is two loops. So what would one loop be? Well, one loop would be half of the 0 0.8. So a loop, an individual loop, would be 0 0.4 meters. And we've got 1.2 meters. So obviously there's going to be three loops. So I'll try to draw this one. One, two, three. Three loops. Hopefully that went okay. And next lesson in part two, we'll do some, some practice exam questions. And thanks for watching. I'll speak to you soon.